up everyone, welcome to example six. So we're gonna switch gears and go from explicit formulas to recursive formulas. So here's the recursive formula for a geometric sequence. Again, when you hear geometric, right, you're thinking R. When you hear sequence, you hear a list of numbers. All right, so the recursive formula for a geometric sequence with common ratio R and first term a sub one is a sub n is equal to R times a sub n minus one. That means your current term is the previous term times r. All right, that's all that's trying to say. Current term is previous term times r because that's how we get from one term to the next in a geometric sequence. You take your term, multiply it by r, and you get the next term. All right, so use a recursive formula for a geometric sequence. All right, let's write this recursive formula for the following geometric sequence. It looks like we've got 2, 4 thirds, 8 ninths, 16 20 sevenths. Okay. So when it comes to something like this, right, I hear geometric, so I'm thinking R. I hear sequence, I've got my list. The two most important things is I need my a sub one value, which I can see right there is two. Right, so I know a sub one is equal to two, but we don't know what R is equal to yet, and that's very important when you're dealing with geometric sequences. Well, if I want my R, it's a ratio of any current term to the previous term. So I can take a look at any of these pairs. I can take a look at 8 ninths and 16 20 sevenths. I can look at 4 thirds and 8 ninths. I could look at 2 and 4 thirds. So I can take the first two terms, second and third term, or the third and fourth term. Doesn't matter. But I want to look at them in ratio because I need a common ratio. So I'm going to just take a look at these first two together. And we should do the more recent term in ratio to the previous term. So I'm going to do 4 thirds and I'm going to divide it by 2. And just for fun, I'm going to do this without my calculator, right? This would be 4 thirds divided by 2. That would be like 4 thirds times 1 half, which is ultimately 4 sixths or 2 thirds. So I know that took me a little while, but each term is 2 thirds of the previous term. So let me go ahead and say each term is two-thirds of the previous term. All right, and I just, I wanna work this, let's just check, because I know it seems kind of funky, especially with fractions, but let's take a look. If I take two and I multiply it by two-thirds, sure enough, I get the fraction four-thirds. Well, let's take four-thirds and multiply it by two-thirds, right? Multiply it by that R value. What fraction am I left with? Eight-ninths. Okay, let's take 8 ninths, multiply it by r. What fraction do I get? 16 20 sevenths. So this, this r, this common ratio, it is working through all of this. All right, so how do I write this up as a recursive formula? Well, for recursive formulas, you need your starting value, which in this case was 2, and then we're going to apply this. For every term after a sub 1, so as long as n is greater than or equal to 2, meaning this is a sub 2, or a sub 3, or a sub 4, or a sub 5. Basically, the only thing it can't say is a sub 1. That's our starting point. Then a sub n will be equal to r, and our r was 2 thirds times a sub n minus 1. That's it. Nothing more to it than that. All right, this is the recursive formula. All right. Now, I want to just compare and contrast that with the explicit formula. All right, if I did this the explicit way, I would say a sub 1 was, excuse me, a sub n was a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So here I would say this was 2 times 2 thirds to the n minus 1. All right, this is the explicit formula. Now, our, our problem did not ask us to find this. I'm just doing this for fun, all right? But I do want you to see it in action. I do want you to see it working. If I was gonna go with the recursive formula and find a sub one, a sub one is just two, because it says it right there. If I was gonna go with the explicit formula and find a sub one, this would be two thirds times two thirds to the one minus one. So let's plug that into our calculator just so we can see it working. Can I get this in view? A little bit, so we'll go two times two-thirds raised to the n minus one. And again, I'm finding a sub one, 
So you see that popping out a two. So both ways I'm popping out a two, either with the recursive formula or the explicit formula with n being one. All right, let's find a sub two. a sub two, according to this uh, recursive formula, is two thirds times, well, if n is two, two minus one is one, so this is a sub one, which we know to be two. All right, so I'm gonna get 1.33 with the recursive formula. Let's try this. a sub two will be two, times two thirds, all right, raised to the two minus one. All right, and I still get the same number, right? So here we go, recursive, explicit. I just want you to see they're both producing the same answer, which they should, they're just two different ways of writing up the same formula. All right, and we can keep on going with this, but I just want you to get comfortable with the recursive formula. I find them actually much easier than the explicit formulas but they're a little wonky in their notation. I think sometimes these subscripts throw us off. Current term, previous term. That's all there is to it. All right, so with that, we finished 9.3. We've taken a look at now at geometric sequences. I'm hoping we're comfortable finding R, right? That common ratio of your current term in ratio to your previous term. And then using explicit formulas for geometric sequences and recursive formulas for geometric sequences. Because where we're moving next is we're gonna take all these lists and we're gonna start adding those sequences. So we're gonna add the numbers from the sequence and we're gonna call those series. And then we're gonna have a whole new set of formulas for the arithmetic series and the geometric series. All right, so with that, I will catch you over in section 9.4. Thanks so much, gang. I'll see you in a bit, bye.